Many workplaces are vulnerable to insider threats. The following scenarios highlight some of the signs. Would you recognize these situations as potential threats if they happen to you? Ted has been employed at his firm for six years. His firm's approaching a major security upgrade that has kept him working late into the evening, so he uses his lunch break to run a few errands close by the office. As he talks on his cell and walks back to his office, Ted notices a co-worker, Doug Redman. Doug appears to have just handed a bulky folder to a man and then walked away. Later that evening, while working late, Alex, another colleague, stops by to see Doug, startling him slightly. Doug immediately closes his laptop. What are you working on? No, I'm finished, forget it, I'm out of here. I'm just sending out some emails and then I'm scooting. Complaining about the company in your blog again? Huh? What a blog, you have a blog? No, you got a blog. I, I don't have a blog. Blonde44G, that's you, isn't it? Well, you know what, so what? Because I'm allowed to blog, you know? it's a Defensive, country, Doug says that he was just blowing off steam. All these late nights are driving him crazy. Besides, he says, he uses a cover name, so the company execs won't know it's him. Alex isn't so sure. He doesn't think talking about a private company security upgrade on a personal blog does any of them any good. Doug dismisses it. You're tired. You should go home. Alex shrugs it off and walks away. A few days later, using a co-worker's badge, Doug gains access to a restricted area. Doug is nervous as he glances around him and connects a thumb drive to one of the processors. Gaining confidence, Doug begins to take pictures of restricted documents. As he returns the documents to the files, Doug hears someone enter the room. Doug is excited by his daring actions and thinks he has succeeded, until... Uh, hey, Doug. Uh, were you just coming from the restricted area? Yeah. <coughs> oh. Doug stammers a little as he tells Jane that he was just looking for Cindy to return her badge. He found it in the kitchen and was worried it might fall into the wrong hands. Jane is skeptical, but has known Doug for several years, so doesn't push. Yeah, okay, and just, again, no more in the restricted area, okay? Okay, you know, I'm trying to help, that's it. It appears Doug is frustrated that Jane is lecturing him about entering the restricted area. After all, he was just trying to return Cindy's badge, wasn't he? While Cindy is eating lunch at a restaurant a few blocks away from her office, she sees her co-worker Doug and is about to call him to come join her. Before she can, Doug makes a phone call. Not realizing he is within earshot of Cindy, Doug speaks candidly about downloading something large from the office network. He explains a data transfer hasn't been completed. His conversation seems tense. Cindy is confused because the data he is talking about is related to the security upgrade and is only privy to senior management. But Doug is not senior management. Doug continues his conversation as he walks by, and Cindy is left wondering what just happened. Something's not right with Doug. He is changing, and even co-workers who do not know him well are beginning to notice. Alone at lunchtime, Doug sees Ted and asks him to join him. The conversation quickly becomes familiar. Doug talks about his pending divorce, which he hasn't mentioned before, and Ted tells him he's sorry to hear about it. He mentions that several days ago he saw Doug give a man a folder in the lobby of their office building and ask if it was Doug's divorce lawyer. Visibly shaken, Doug quickly changes the subject to all the purchases he has made recently. He shows Ted his new watch and pictures of his new car on his smartphone. When Doug begins to complain about the big guys back at the office, vaguely referencing mistakes he perceives the higher-ups to be making, Ted asks Doug which projects he is working on. Doug deflects the question and says they are stupid projects that are beneath his ability. Ted decides it's a good time to leave. Doug's recent actions become the topic of conversation at lunch. As the co-workers prepare notes, they find that while each has been working late one or two nights a week preparing for the security upgrade, Doug has been there every single night and often is the last to leave. Cindy talks about the incident in the cafe. She also mentions that Jane told her Doug used Cindy's security badge to get into the restricted area, claiming he was just trying to find Cindy and return her badge. Ted talks about his strange lunch with Doug. They're not close, 
yet he talked openly about his divorce, complained about his boss, then paid for his lunch. Alex agrees that Doug has been acting strange and often hides what he is doing on his computer and he adds that he has been blogging about the company. Cindy wants to report Doug to HR. Ted does not want to get Doug in trouble and explains Doug is just going through a tough time. He is really a good guy. Ted also does not want to be questioned about Doug. The group discusses a little longer, but Cindy prevails. Their combined stories are way too much to ignore. Cindy promises to find an anonymous way to report their experiences to human resources. You probably caught a few of the indicators that make Doug a potential insider threat to his company. Doug is being secretive, but he also has been careless when he thinks he's in a safe place or in familiar company. The following behavior serves as indicators for Doug's coworkers. Working unusual hours. Unusual computer use. Inappropriate use of social media. Vague answers to pointed questions. Attempting access to unauthorized locations. Unexplained disposable spending. Making personal issues public. Discontent with supervisor. Disloyalty to the organization. An unusual or alarming confluence of these situations may indicate a threat. You have the power to protect your workplace. If you see something suspicious from one of your coworkers, say something to your supervisor, human resources department, or your security officer. It takes courage to act on your judgment or intuition, especially when someone you work with or know personally is involved. If you see something, say something. 